Hey Fizz One Kids, Campbell here. In our first video on kinematics in two dimension, we're going to do a little review of vectors and trigonometry. Now, remember I said that vectors, a vector is any quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is the size, the direction is just which way. And we represent vectors with arrows, and the length of the arrow, right, reflects the magnitude, and the angle of the arrow reflects the direction. So here I have a vector which is a velocity vector, right? Velocity has magnitude and direction. And I can see that the magnitude is five meters per second. And it's at some angle, which it doesn't say here, but it's at some angle uh, to the horizontal axes. So vectors, so it's moving, and that's actually moving in a northeast direction. So vectors have magnitude and direction. Now, since we're gonna deal with two dimensions, plus and minus, you know, are up and down, are not or right or left adequate anymore, we're going to have to identify them. And we usually do that in terms of the compass, east, north, west, south, whatever. So if we set up a coordinate system, say I travel 40 meters along this line, I would say that if my displacement is 40 meters, that I have traveled 40 meters at 50 degrees north of east. Now, the reason why we call this 50 degrees north of east, think of it this way, we have measured this angle from this positive x-axis, which we're calling the east. So that means that angle is measured 50 degrees and it's north of the east axis. So it's 50 degrees north of east. Say we measure that angle. Well, that would be 40 meters, 60 degrees north, of west because it's being measured from the west axis and it's north of it. If I instead were down here in this quadrant and it was 60 degrees, here I'm measuring it from the south axis or that negative y axis, so I would call that 60 degrees west of south because I'm to the west of the south axis. So the axis you're measuring from goes last and where you are with respect to that goes first. What would you call that angle? Well, we're in the south quad, we're measuring it from the east axis, so we're south, 60 degrees south of east. So now when we deal with motion in two dimensions, we're gonna have to work with angles, so we're gonna have to do some trigonometry, and we need to report them with regard to an axis. I usually pick that x-axis, so it's usually like north or south of east, or north or south of west, that's usually what I do. When are vectors equal? Well, two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. So this is regardless of their starting points. As long as the vectors have the same size and the same angle, they're equivalent. Now, remember when we talked about displacement in our first unit, displacement is the difference between your final position and your initial position, regardless of the path that you took. And in our first unit, we just considered one-dimensional motion, so moving in a straight line either forward or backwards or up or down. But nobody moves like that, right? So now we're really going to talk in terms of the net displacement. And the net displacement is that final minus initial, but when we're not moving all in just one direction, forward or backward or up or down. So for example here, I have someone that maybe walked from point P to Q, which was four miles in the horizontal direction, and then they walked another three miles north, and they ended up here at point S. So my displacement, right, distance, right, would be four plus three, because it's a total path taken, but my displacement is the final spot minus the initial spot. And so we're gonna have to do some trigonometry to figure out what is that, right? But this is just the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So if you know anything about triangles, this is a three, four, five triangle, so my displacement would be five miles. And that's what this video is about. How do I break vectors into components and how do I solve for them? So now that we have all these different motions that's gonna, that are gonna go on, we're gonna move north or south or east or west, we need to learn how to add vectors. So we're going to use a method in this class called the tip-to-tail addition method. And you just simply put them tail to tip. Now we'll start out easy. Here I have two vectors. Let's say they're displacement vectors. And I want to know what is the net displacement of these two objects. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vector and I'm going to place it so its tail is at the tip of the other vector, just like that. Then my resultant vector, final, uh, well, initial, Final minus initial, right? This would be 
called my resultant vector. We call it our resultant vector. Um, so that's a simple case, right? I have two vectors and I just add them together by putting them tip to tail. But what if I have this whole mess of vectors? I have a lot of stuff going on here and I want to know what is the vector sum of all of these. Well, to add them up, right, sum is add, we're just going to put them all tip to tail. And it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Um, no matter which way we go, we're going to end up in the same spot. So I'm going to take this one first, and that'll be my first vector. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to slide it so its tail is at the tip of that. And I'll move this one over so its tail is at the tip of that. And then here again, my little baby vector here, we're going to take this guy, and again, tip to tail. So we take the tail of the vector and put it to the tip of the last vector. Now, if these were displacement vectors, right, displacement final minus initial, so what my displacement, my resultant, that net displacement would be, would be from here to there. So that would be my, whoops, <laughs> my resultant vector. Can I move you back up there? <laughs> that would be my resultant vector. Oh, board struggles. All right, so tip to tail. Put them at the tail. The tail goes to the tip. Anytime we add, we add vectors, right, we put them tip to tail in the way that they are presented to us. But if we subtract, what we have to do is we have to take that subtracted vector and flip it over. So for example, let's say I have A and B. And if I wanted to add them, right, I would just take my B here and I would move it to the tip of A. And my resultant would just be you know, there's my resultant from the tail of A to the tip of B, right? There's my resultant. Nice big vector. But if I subtract it, instead of adding B like this, what I have to do is I have to flip B over and then move B over to the tip of A. So there is my subtraction. So I physically take that B that's going in one direction and I flip it over and I put it at the tip of A. And notice now my resultant here is much smaller. Oops, that little thing that's down there should be up here. <laughs> so there is the resultant when I subtract, you flip. Anytime I have a vector that is at some angle other than the horizontal, no matter what unit I'm in, whether I'm in two-dimensional kinematics, whether I'm in forces, doesn't matter, I'm gonna to have to break them into X and Y components. So here is vector A, and I have broken that vector into an X component, the horizontal component, which will be parallel to the X axis, and a Y component, which is parallel to the Y axis. So all I did was I took this vector right here, and I split it into an X component, and I split it into a Y component. Now, notice that this, I put this AY here, it is equivalent, right, to that because it has the same magnitude and the same direction regardless of where it started. So I could just go and make this into a right triangle and then the vector sum of my components, AX and AY, are equal to the resultant, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Now there's, we, I talked about tip to tail addition and that's really the method we're gonna use, but there's also a method called parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, what you do is you break your components, your X and your Y, uh, just like this. And then, right, we've made a parallelogram and we could see, right, there's a rectangle, right? If I connect the lines here and we can see that the, the resultants of that, the vector sum of AX and AY is just this, a here, all right, parallelogram. And so bisecting this gives me the sum of the two components. So another way you can do vector sums isn't just through tip to tail addition or adding vectors through tip to tail addition. You can also do it through a, what's called the parallelogram method. So here is a vector uh, that it looks like it's some, it's pointing somewhere north of east. Um, at some angle from the x-axis here, what is the magnitudes of the x and y components of this vector? Well, all you gotta do is we're gonna drop one straight down here. And so the magnitude of AX, AX is equal to positive two or two east. And the magnitude of the y component, right, if we draw this back here, 
the magnitude of my y component, a y, is equal to positive 3, or 3 degrees north. What does that make the magnitude of this vector a? Well, that means we got to do some trig, right? This is just Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem can be used to solve these problems. So if I want to know what is the magnitude of that vector, all I got to do is use Pythagorean theorem. So a squared is equal to ax squared plus ay squared, right? So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Maybe that's how you've seen it in trig. So all I'm going to do to solve for my resultant, which I called a, is I'm going to take the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. All right, so 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. All right, so a is the square root of 13. So when I'm finding vectors at angles, you break them into x and y components, and then you use some trigonometry like Pythagorean theorem here to solve for the resultant. Now let's talk a little bit about trig notation versus fig, uh, physics notation. If I'm talking about the horizontal component of this triangle, right, in, in trig we'd call that the adjacent. In physics, we're going to call that AX, or BX, or CX, or whatever letter X you want to call it, but something sub X. Um, our vertical component, right, this vertical component here um, is going to be, is in trig, right, that's the opposite. Um, when I have a right triangle, I should specify this is a right triangle. And, but we're going to call this a Y. Our resultant, right, in trig, we call that the hypotenuse. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Um, and our hypotenuse, right, we're just going to call that A. Or we could call it the resultant R. You decide. But so this is the notation that we will use when we're working with triangles. The adjacent is the A, it's the X component of the vector. The opposite of our angle is going to be the Y component, and the hypotenuse is going to be our resultant. Now, just a little bit of trig review for those of you who are new to trig. Um, if this is my right triangle, and I want to solve for a y, right? If I if I write these in terms of equations, right? The sine, if you remember in um, trig, right? The sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in physics, we will say that the sine of theta is equal to a y, the y component over a. The cosine, right, in trig, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so for us that'll be ax over a. And of course the tangent, right, is the opposite over the adjacent, so the tangent of theta is equal to our ay over ax. And of course if we have to do some solving for things, like say I wanted to find the value of the angle, right, we're going to do that a lot actually with tangents. If I wanted to find the value of the angle, right, that would mean that theta here, right, would be the arc tangent of a y over ax. I noticed in your summer assignment some of you didn't know about the arc tangent or the arc sine or the arc cosine when you're solving for theta. That's just a button on your calculator. All right, last thing. Um, before you stop and do your WSQ, find the X and Y components of this acceleration vector. So pause the video and let's see what you get. Well, what you should have found that for a Y, you get three meters per second squared, right? Because what you would do, right, you take the sine of 30 degrees, right, that's equal to a Y over your hypotenuse a, right, and a is 6, right, so that would be a y is equal to 6 times the sine of 30. Now 30 is a nice uh, angle because sine of 30 is a half, so you just take a half of 6. For our a x, what you should have gotten as a value, you should have gotten 5.2 meters per second squared, 
right? because that's the cosine. The cosine of 30 degrees is equal to AX over the hypotenuse, AY, which is the value 6. So when you solve for that, you get 5.2. Make sure when you do all these problems, your calculator is in degrees, not radians. So if you're in pre-calc or calc, you may have to change that. All right, do your WSQ and I'll see you in class.